Dear viewers of the Tom Photo channel, I often hear talk about good and bad copies of lenses. Sometimes people call their bad lenses lemons. They say that you are more likely to find lemons among vintage lenses that were all manually made and different artisans and factories were not equally good. But what about modern lenses? How much can their quality vary? Here I have three copies of the hugely popular Nikon's Nikkor AF-S 50mm f1.8 G. It's among my favorite lenses. But is one of these lenses significantly better than the others? Let me test this with my Nikon D3400 by photographing a plywood board from 1.5 meters away and measuring the sharpness of the photos and fragments of the photos. When I changed lenses, I took utmost care not to shake or move the camera. Even the tripod was taped to the floor. I took 12 photos with each lens using autofocus, center focusing, self timer, and precisely the same settings for each photo. Because the autofocus can miss at times, I discarded the three least sharp photos from each set. The remaining nine photos were used to determine average sharpness. If you'd like to know in more detail how I find photo sharpness, please check out the links under the video. Here are the main results. This is the sharpness of my three lenses, and the little marks on top show standard deviation. I was very surprised to see this. Is my lens A a lemon and lens C a cherry? I thought it was best to repeat the experiments one more time. So I repeated the experiment precisely, and these are the new results. Qualitatively, the results are the same. Lenses A, B, and C seem to form a gradient from lemon to cherry. But let's dig a bit deeper. I think box plots are the most informative for presenting this data. Here are the box plots for both sets of experiments. The lenses are A, B, and C, and the repetitions are next to one another. Let me explain very briefly how to read box plots. Each box contains 50% of the data points in its set. Note that some boxes are very narrow. The line inside the box represents the median of the data. The whiskers extend from the box to the maximum and minimum values within a certain range. Data points outside the whiskers are outliers. These plots are easy to read. When the boxes don't overlap, there is a good chance that the sets are different. We see that the lenses A, B, and C are always different, and C is always the sharpest. Let's look at the center sharpness and corner sharpness of the photos separately. The photos are 6000 by 4000 pixels. I cut out the central 900 by 600 pixels from the center of each photo and 900 by 600 pixels from the upper left corner of the photo. I then measured the sharpness of these fragments as before. Now that you are familiar with box plots, I'm showing you box plots. The first three boxes are center sharpness of the first experiment and the next three boxes are center sharpness of the second experiment. For some reason, lens B shows lots of variation in the first experiment, and so all three lenses look kind of similar. But the second experiment turned out a bit cleaner, and we see a gradient from worst to best when going from A to B and then to C. However, the differences are small. But what causes the large overall sharpness differences that we saw earlier? This becomes evident when we look at the corner sharpness. Again, experiment 1 is on the left and experiment 2 is on the right. Lenses from left to right are A, B, and C. In both experiments, we see that lens A performs the worst. So what makes lens A a lemon is not so much its center sharpness, but rather its corner sharpness. Lens B has the best corner sharpness. It tops even the lens C that was the sharpest overall. This is most interesting. It looks like the differences between the center and corner sharpness is where it's at. We can also look at center sharpness divided by corner sharpness. Here I'd say that the smaller values are better because for a good lens, center and corner sharpness should not be very different. Please note that the absolute values of center and corner sharpness are not very meaningful because the corner of the photo is not the same image as the center of the photo. But we can still appreciate the patterns when we divide center sharpness by corner sharpness. Lens B clearly has the smallest value. It has the most uniform sharpness across the frame. So my verdict is that lens A is the worst, however you measure it. It has earned its lemon title. 
This lens has been used the most and it looks a little bit more tired than the others too. Lens C is the sharpest lens in the center and also good in the corners. This is the best for portrait photography when you have a face in the middle. It's good for photographing any object in the center of the frame. Lens B is the most uniform lens, not quite as sharp in the middle as C, but it makes up in the corners. Many landscape photographers might like this lens. My personal pick would be lens C, because center sharpness is what stands out the most and corners matter a little less. I'm glad I did this exercise and compared three lenses because I did not expect such measurable differences. I was indeed surprised to see so much variation. Note that I only used one f-stop setting, one of the f-stops I often use with this lens. Maybe some other f-stop values would have yielded a different result. Let me know in the comments what your experiences have been and how much variation you have seen between different copies of the same lens model. How did you determine the differences and did you consider them significant? What lenses have you tested? Thanks so much for spending some time with me. I know your time is valuable. If you like this video, I invite you to consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like. Enjoy your photography. Goodbye.